Thank you very much for joining me this evening for another session on um, um, calorie management. Remember that we started the discussion on calorie management uh, last week. And uh, uh, if you were not able to watch it, I will really encourage you to uh, 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 watch it. This should be available. You can contact our production team and we'll be able to bring this information to, to you. Um, today, specifically in terms of calorie management, we'll be uh, uh, laying emphasis on something that I personally have practiced and I found it to be extremely uh, 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 helpful. I believe that the significant changes that I've seen in my health, uh, uh, um, a significant part of it, apart from God's grace, came from this practice of uh, what we call intermittent fasting. Um, I just want you to uh, 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 just look at uh, most most religions in the world actually practice intermittent fasting, and that is that is pretty interesting. Uh, it helps in in many 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 ways. Um, um, I engage in that through uh, my church and other activities, and I believe that um, not only has it got uh, good benefits. Uh, in t from the religious standpoint, uh, 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 but it is also uh, uh, very, very, very good uh, for uh, 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 cardiovascular and overall body health. So let us start with a few um, um, observations that we know. We realize that animals, powerful animals, sometimes, most of the time, they eat once a day. You know, um, and they sleep a lot. It is known that lions can sleep all the way up to twenty, all the way up to sixteen hours a day, and they end up eating uh, 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 once a day. And sometimes it's not even once a day. They may not be able to get to hunt even the subsequent day. And these strong animals do not need to eat three times a day. But because of development, industrial development, especially in the developed world, most people in the United States, in the developed countries, they eat three times a day with snack. So if you add a snack, that is a lot. And we believe that this practice of eating three times a day with a snack is part of the problems that we have encountered in terms of... Um, in terms of diabetes, in terms of cardiovascular problems, and it is even believed that there is a benefit from intermittent fasting uh, uh, for the brain. It is important for us that if we want to talk about deep cardiovascular health, then we cannot ignore the importance of intermittent fasting, which I say that anybody who knows me that I strongly practice intermittent fasting, that has helped me a lot. So we know that way back in 1997, uh, it was published in the England Journal that animals that undergo 20, 20 hours of, of calorie restriction, you can use the term calorie restriction for intermittent fasting, they tend to do better. They tend to do much better than animals that eat all the time. So we have data, and most of the things that I'm going to discuss with you come from a publication uh, um, that uh, came in New England Journal. The, 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 the good thing is that this was probably one, the first review article in New England Journal, which is the one of, if not the premier medical journal in this country. Uh, it is one of the premier journals in this country. And the other publications that you can go and look at, uh, 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 which now came to support Intermittent fasting, which I have been practicing and I've been talking about probably for the last seven years. And, and now we have even stronger evidence and publications that is going to help us. So to, to summarize, uh, uh, to, to give you an idea of what we're going to cover today, 
Um, we want to look at the mechanisms of intermittent fasting. We are not there yet. But let me broadly state this, that intermittent fasting, number one, leads to what we call uh, 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 um, metabolic switch. What we're going to discuss is critical and important part that helps us in the management of patient metabolic switch we're going to talk about that then in addition to the metabolic switch there are other things that when you are engaged in intermittent fasting um it also helps you so it brings in calories uh, the metabolic switch which i'm going to talk about then the other benefits of of intermittent fasting because it stimulates certain things that we're going to also talk about then we're going to look at the various intermittent fasting regimens which you can adopt and then we're going to ask the question is intermittent fasting all about weight loss because sometimes when people are not obese or they are not overweight they think they are healthy but i always tell people i've had the opportunity to do a lot of uh, procedures in terms of heart blockages and in terms of the leg. And I can tell you this, when people who are not obese come with heart attack, most, sometimes in my experience, the disease seems to be even much more severe than people who are big. So there is something called obesity paradox. So don't, don't just think about intermittent fasting as, as, as just a weight loss program. I mean, as I said, dieting is not just fasting. No, 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 no. It's a change of lifestyle. So the discussion we are going to do is not about losing weight. I want to repeat this. It is not about losing weight, but it is about healthy overall. Today, I'm even going to go beyond cardiovascular health. Overall health for you. We're going to start with this broad statement about intermittent fasting or calorie restriction, which leads to metabolic or metabolic switching. So, when when you do intermittent fasting, I want to state the three the three broad things that it does, so so that we all understand. Number one, as I said, it leads to metabolic switch. That means that you move from a glucose base now to fatty acids to stimulate the system. That is going to be healthy for you. That mechanism leads to your ability to undergo what undergo uh, 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 stressful situations for the body. You see, when people in our body, as part of the cycle, we produce, we produce uh, 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 free radicals. And these free radicals and, uh, uh, and oxidants, that do damage to the body. What intermittent fasting does is the ability to reduce these free radicals, produce anti uh, antioxidants in your system to be able to help you. So do, they do not only manage your glucose, which is your sugar, which we're going to talk about it. They also help us in, in, in reducing what? The stress that comes on the body uh, uh, internally. I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about stress from not having money or something like that. I'm talking about stresses that go on in the body that end up to, in disease. And let me tell you, intermittent fasting can also reduce what? Inflammation. So these are the three broad headings that we looked at, and 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 then we can go on. So let us start with um, metabolic switch. In terms of the metabolic switch, for you to be able to understand the principle of metabolic switch, we're going to show you an article. So we're going to show you a picture from the New England Journal article that discuss these things in a graphic form, so that uh, you're going to see the graphic of what I'm talking about, and that is going to help you. So when we eat, right? When we eat, your food contains, uh, as I said, glucose, your food contains fat, and your food contains protein. As we've discussed, the two main sources of, of energy for your body is, first of all, glucose. And then if there's no glucose, it moves to the fat. So, this is what we know. We're talking about the metabolic switch which occurs in people who do intermittent fasting. So if you see over here, when somebody eats, when you eat, you have the glucose, and the glucose is what the body will use. That is carbohydrates. The body will use the carbohydrates, and the fat that is in your food is converted into triglycerides. That is the adipose tissue. 
in your body. The fat, that means what, what people say, fat in the body. That's what the fat end up going to. But when you start, when you start to fast, generally around eight hours of fasting, that is why four hours of fasting, three hours of fasting uh, may not get it done, right? Around eight to 12 hours of fasting, then uh, the, the uh, process, the benefits or the process starts before you even get the benefits. So if you are looking at the diagram that is on the screen, the diagram about mechanism, which we are going to show you. So if you look down, you see something like banana slice down there. Over there, you see what we call TG. So whenever, when you start fasting, what happens is that the T TG stands for triglycerides. This is, is, is written fat or adipose tissue. Everybody, adipose, we know that is fat. The fat in your body is, uh, is, is now broken down from triglycerides uh, into fatty acids. So the FFA stands for the fatty acids. And these fatty acids are then transferred. The, the fatty acids are then transferred into, you see the FFA, they are then transferred to the liver. And in the liver, the liver will then break the fatty acids down into what we call the ketone bodies. So the ketone bodies is what you see, the B, the beta HB and the acetyl CoA. These are then transferred into the bloodstream and they provide energy during the period of fasting to the brain and to all the to the heart and and to the muscle so that is why you see that uh, uh the periods of 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 fasting uh, uh uh is the time that it can help people reduce your weight but i want to emphasize this that it is not just about weight loss but part of the mechanism of reducing your adipose tissue comes from this is a conversion of the triglycerides to the fatty acids that goes into what into the liver to produce the ketone bodies which are then sent to the brain and these ketone bodies they whilst they are in the blood vessel well, once they get to the cells in the brain and inward in the other other uh, in the heart or even in the muscle they end up improving many many mechanisms in terms of uh, removal of damaged cells of the body and they also even enhance the repair of the uh, of your body cells that can be that can be repaired so so it Im improves your mechanism the other thing that we now know beyond calorie switching that this diagram shows so i've show, i've talked about I've talked about, uh, I'm not talking about calorie switching, metabolic switch. That is that instead of just going through the glucose, now you are going through the fatty acids and the ketone pattern. That can lead to weight loss, but it goes beyond that. Listen, if you also see that once you have these ketones in your body, before I even go on, let me talk about something that is important. Uh, 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 I just want to go back here a little bit. Once when you start fasting i'm repeating this intentionally it takes around 8 to 12 hours for your ketones to start rising in your body and it peaks around 24 hours and it can further increase to increase when you continue your fasting for 48 hours so if you want to see the true benefits of intermittent fasting then the fasting period should generally be around around a minimum of eight hours ideally 12 hours and optimally 24 hours this is what gives you the benefit of intermittent fasting uh, uh we are not talking about long-term fasting for a week no 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 we're talking about restricting your calorie intake around if you are not diabetic or something like that uh, if you're healthy enough to do these things then restricting your calorie intake for about eight to 12 hours uh, and ideally for 24 hours. So we'll come to the various regimen. Now, the other thing that also happens, if you look at this diagram, is that once the the uh, uh, the liver produces these ketones, that is the ketones are the beta HB and the acetyl-CoA, these ones also produce something that we will call 
fibroblast growth factor you see it in this diagram in the diagram it is it is it is seen as fgf21 that is fibroblast growth factor 21 and this has profound beneficial effects on virtually many 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 parts of our body including the brain so you see that the fgf21 goes to the muscle goes to the heart goes to the brain and we'll talk about these specific benefits in all these areas which shows you that intermittent fasting is not an issue about weight loss but it is actually reducing your inflammation improving your body your body's ability to remove free radicals and what and oxidants that damage your body your your, your cells improves the dna uh, repair which does not occur when you eat three meals without together with snacks so this is a principle that that has now been established that intermittent fasting produces metabolic what metabolic switching that is moving away that enhances the production of the ketones and the ketone further stimulate pathways that reduces inflammation once again improves your ability to withstand stress and also help you in terms of your weight so these are the points that was established so let us look at various studies that have been done to be able to help us understand these patterns we're going to come to the various intermittent uh, uh fasting regimens um that i've talked about i want to lay emphasis on i've talked about stress there are a lot of stress in the system so even for normal weight people if you are even if you have a normal weight the practice of intermittent fasting is something that you should adopt it's not just about your weight it helps your body to be what to be better and i'm going to give you examples around the world for you and for you to know that it is believed that the a particular society in the world that lives longer than any other any other uh, uh group of people in the world their their lifestyle is based on uh, uh, uh intermittent fasting and the things that we've been talking about so if you're interested in longevity uh, 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 which God gives to you. I believe that God gives everybody the opportunity to live as long as possible, but we have the right and the privilege to, 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 to move it one way or the other through our own choices. So, so let us look at um, some of the trials that have been done, you know. From animal studies, there's a, a study that was done by a guy by name Goodrick. And in the study of Goodrick, that was, uh, he showed that animals that are placed so listen to this it's a very very important so animals that are placed on a um he looked at rats right uh in this animal study and he realized that he put these animals on alternate days of what alternate days of uh, of eating that is what alternate intermittent fasting and when he did that the lifespan of the animals that that were on intermittent fasting improved by 80 percent this is pretty uh, uh profound so these animal studies has what has given us a uh, 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 gave the impetus for clinical studies uh, uh, uh in humans to 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 to, uh, uh, to consolidate the principle that intermittent fasting is not just about weight loss but intermittent fasting is a powerful lifestyle that we should all adapt to be able to help us. You see, so they looked at the, they also did another trial just to give you a perspective here, where they did a meta analysis of all the trials that have been done from 1934. Listen to this, 1934 to 2012, and when they looked at these all the, the trials, the totality of the study showed that. If you practice intermittent fasting, you can improve your lifespan by 14 to 45%. This is how powerful intermittent fasting is. I must say that not all the trials ended up being coming up with the same results. And that is why it was important for us 
uh, 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 to do the meta-analysis. The principle of meta-analysis is you bring all the trials together and then you find the total direction that if you put all of them together, what does it say? And it is believed that the differences in the various trials come from the way that they did the intermittent fasting and the kind of food that they put them on. But overall, the totality of the study clearly demonstrate that intermittent fasting uh, 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 is, is a very... It's a very, very powerful thing. Before I come there, I just want us to look at some human studies for it to give you some perspective here. You see, they looked at some, uh, 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 in one study, they looked at 16 healthy, I'm using the word healthy people, and they put them on intermittent fasting, that is alternate day uh, uh, fasting for 22 days. And listen, they lost only 2.5% of their weight and 4% of, of their fat mass. Yet, they had a 57% reduction in their ins fasting insulin levels. Very powerful. So, it is not just a concept of weight loss. No. So, even if you are practicing intermittent fasting and you are not seeing benefits in terms of what? In terms of your weight. There is still, you can still have benefits in controlling diabetes, in controlling what? Blood sugars. As this study what this study showed, I mean the number of people in the study is not big, but it reinforced the concept again. There was another study that they looked at hundred women, right? These hundred women who were uh, 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 they were they put them on the five to two uh, five to two regiment of intermittent fasting, or twenty five percent reduction in their calorie intake, and when they looked at these women, though there was no significant reduction in weight loss, listen. No significant reduction in weight loss. Yet, something happened that is very important. Those women who were in the group, you know, intermittent fasting, they had better insulin sensitivity and reduction in their weight, what? In their waist circumference. Which we know that reduction in waist circumference is a very, very good thing for us to do. Intermittent fasting is something that if you are overweight, if you are obese, or even if you have normal weight, you should be able to adapt because if your health i mean if if after discussion with your doctor there is nothing that stands in the way of intermittent fasting everything that we're telling you here is advisory so it is important that you go back to your doctor and be able to do that so what are the benefits we we know what the benefits of intermittent fasting is uh, um, as i said it improves the ketones improve your resistance and, and if you do intermittent fasting for a long time, then you have, have a sustained uh, 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 improvement in your ability to handle your blood sugars, in your, uh, heart, your how your body manages even the fat that you eat, even the, 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 the bowel, your GI. The gastrointestinal system, the uh, micro microorganisms over there is even better. It reduces the fat in your heart, in your ab abdomen. It reduces inflammation and it has many benefits on the heart. Uh, uh, we'll come to that. So these things I've told you. So I'm going to come to the specifics pertaining to the heart and the brain. So that is going to, is going to help all of us. So let us look at uh, uh, what does intermittent fasting do for you in terms of the heart. First of all, we now know that intermittent. if you do intermittent fasting, it can lead to reduction in your heart rate. A reduction in, in your heart rate is a good thing. That is what we see in athletes, right? It's a sign of uh, uh, if it is not due to uh, uh, a mechanism in the conductivity of or, or in, the conduct, in the conduction system in your heart. A reduced heart rate, which we see in athletes, is a very good thing. So most athletes do not have a high heart rate. More athletes actually have a low heart rate. It is known that some of the best footballers the world has ever seen, their heart rates were in the 40s. So, so uh, they can double and probably triple their heart rate whilst you're running with them and uh, they will not feel the impact uh, 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 that you may be feeling. So that is a good thing. It is also being shown to reduce blood pressure. That is what intermittent fasting has been shown to do. Uh, another very important thing, as you saw in the slides that we showed you, right? What does it do? The hydrolysis of the triglycerides, the fat in your body. So, so, so it improves your your color, your cholesterol profile. 
if you do intermittent fasting you know because as you've seen how does your body get the ketones the production of the ketones come from what come from the hydrolysis of what of the triglycerides it also improves what it also improves the management it is known that the practice of intermittent fasting can move you from what from pre-diabetic to what no diabetes and even in people with type 2 diabetes after having a discussion with your doctor you i mean uh you can you can you can it can significantly help you in terms of of your diabetes so this is something that you may consider bringing it up with your doctor uh with your diabetic doctor or with your primary doctor care doctor uh, uh in consultation with your nutritionist about the practice of intermittent fasting because of this impact the beneficial impact on your blood pressure on your cholesterol on your heart rate which are very very important there is a particular trial they call it the calorie trial the, uh, uh, in the calorie trial they, they ask people uh, 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 to practice intermittent uh, calorie restriction for a period of two years right and it showed that there was a significant benefit in people who were not obese so this discussion of intermittent fasting and it's not for people who are obese i'm not talking about weight reduction here i'm talking about a powerful uh, lifestyle mechanism that can help you to probably live longer and the world world and also live healthy we are interested in long satisfying uh, 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 life rather than long difficult uh, uh, life and that is what intermittent fasting can do for you so so there are many 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 studies uh, 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 that have shown that but let me tell you something about the the, the, the effect of intermittent uh, fasting you know when people were asked to do intermittent fasting for just two to four weeks or ten a day it took several weeks for the benefits of intermittent fasting to go away. So, every day that you practice, every month that you practice intermittent fasting, you are ensuring long-term benefits down the road for yourself. It is believed that intermittent fasting, especially in the mid-age, mid-life, right, practicing that have been shown to have benefits long term so some of the things that you can do whilst you are strong and healthy now can go a long way to be able to what to help you now let me talk about the big one the, 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 the big one here could you believe that even in people with cancer inclu including brain tumors like glioblastoma it is known that caloric restriction that is a uh, uh, intermittent fasting is able to probably slow down the growth of these brain tumors. It does not su surprise me because these very powerful factors like the uh, fibroblast 21 comes out of intermittent fasting and they go to the brain and the muscle and the heart. So, so, so now there are actually trials that are looking at intermittent fasting. If a patient with a cancer can adhere to the regimen in other forms of cancers to see the benefits of intermittent fasting. Then let's look at people with asthma, multiple sclerosis, and arthritis. We know that weight loss reduces asthma symptoms in patients. That is found in the New England Journal paper who are obese. But we, all, uh, uh, we know that. But it goes beyond that. You know, we know that people with multiple sclerosis, the presence of practicing intermittent fasting, that is alternate days, that is a specific one. There are various forms of intermittent fasting out there that uh, I'm going to tell you my personal one. I'm going to give you that for other people. That um, even people with multiple sclerosis, there's some evidence to show that the practice of Intermittent fasting, that is alternate day practice, can reduce autoimmune reactions. That is your body destroying itself and probably can help uh, 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 in, in recovery. You know, so you are beginning to see that the principle of intermittent fasting is not just about fasting. We've known, we've seen cardiovascular benefits. We've seen benefits even in cancer. We've seen benefits in autoimmune disease. So if you are just thinking about intermittent fasting from that perspective, uh, it, uh, my hope is that at the end of the day, 
this particular discussion is going to change your concept for you to be able to what to adapt this lifestyle i have adapted it and i believe that after review of this paper i may need to even modify because my journal intermittent fasting is around uh, um i do weekly intermittent fasting and i do monthly intermittent fasting but um uh, because of uh, uh, my church and other things uh, uh, i'm also a pastor so we do a lot of fasting monthly fasting uh, uh for some time but uh, i'm going to go through the various regimens out there that should be able to help you so let us look at um um the various form of intermittent fasting that is there we're going to put it out for you and it's going to be able to help you if you see the diagram up there what we've done with you today through this program which i strongly encourage you you should send this particular thing to anybody that you know about the principle of intermittent fasting that is going to help you so the first thing that we are trying to do here is education right the food is so abundant in this country but let me tell you there is no data behind three square meals i don't know where it came from but the principle of intermittent fasting clearly shows that eating three times a day doesn't come with any benefits adapting intermittent fasting is something that i'll strongly encourage that you will uh, have a discussion with your doctor with your dietitian to be able to help you so the first thing that we have done on our part is what is to educate you to let you know the benefits of intermittent fasting uh, across board from the brain to the heart to the muscle uh, 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 is going to it goes a long way to help these things having had this i will strongly encourage that um for us for 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 doctors that are watching this program for residents and fellows and everybody all of us that are involved in uh in managing our patients i believe that this is a call to action that we should on our own try to practice intermittent fasting see the benefits thereof which i've seen in my own life and then be able to share our experiences and help our patients to be able to do that so uh, uh you see the kind of doctors that you can talk to to be able to help you your doctors your dietitians so involve you can have this discussion with your primary care doctor family doctor internal medicine doctor definitely a cardiologist i am a cardiologist i am an interventional cardiologist and a neovascular doctor so and that is why i'm coming to you with the principle of intermittent fasting this is not a weight loss program i don't do weight loss program i do healthy cardiovascular education uh, because i believe that i've seen that it is not just uh, i believe and i've seen and i've experienced that the principle of intermittent fasting is not just the concept of what fasting and not eating and then losing weight because it goes beyond that so um you see the lifestyle changes that you're talking about. Once you see your doctor, then you practice these principles. There are other things, exercise programs and those things. But the main emphasis that I want to lay here is the type of intermittent fasting that you can do. So there are three types that, I mean, they talk about, uh, uh, um, which is um, number one is alternate day fasting. You fast, you, you restrict yourself in eating for one day, then you eat the other day. So, as we said, restricting your calorie intake by four hours or six hours may probably not give you that much of a benefit. The fact that you did not eat in the morning and you ate in the evening, if you have an eight-hour difference, that is where your ketones begin to rise. If you have a 12-hour difference, that is where it is it's probably, we know that, that by that time, your ketone levels are going to rise. So, to practice intermittent fasting, yeah, uh, you can adapt the alternate day where you do calorie restriction if you are healthy enough. And after discussing this with your primary doctor, with your I'm laying emphasis about this. After discussing this with your primary doctor or the cardiologist or all the people that you see over here, then you can consider the option of intermittent day fasting. Um, trying intermittent day fasting if you've never fasted before, I tell you, is going to be a challenge. Why? Because when you start fasting when you start intermittent fasting it can lead to a little bit of irritability uh, uh, uh hunger and irritability that that starts within the first few weeks generally it is known that these side effects of intermittent fasting will go away after 
will go away after one month and you are not going to experience that any longer so i will strongly urge you that after discussion with your doctor and other things if you're having these things you should not be you should not be too worried these are normal things that you see so the the thing that the ones that have been tested is alternate day you fast for one day then you eat one day you fast for one day then you eat one day so that is what is is out there and that's what people practice that may be difficult to start i mean uh, for me it's pretty easy for me to be able to do that uh, because i've practiced this for probably uh six seven years now so that is that is uh, uh that is something that you do and you can mix them to be honest with you you can you can mix them so let me go to the other thing we'll call it the uh the five and two so if you look at this this new england journal uh paper that you are looking at it now i think this is a uh, uh it's an adaptation of the second one and the third one. So the five and two principle is that the five and two is that you fast two days every week. So if we have seven days, you make a decision to rest, to fast on Tuesday and fast on Friday, or you fast on Thursday and you fast on Monday. So if you fast two times in a week, uh, that calorie restriction is also something that is very good. So you can do every other day, which is tough. Or you can do the five in two, which is a little easier. Or you can do what we call the time restricted feeding. And I like the combination of the the, the five and two and the time restricted approach. So if you want to, this is what is seen in the intermittent fasting. This is not for long term fasting. This is what is seen in, 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 in the practice of, of, of intermittent fasting that they, they put up here, which I really like. And I think it is easier for you to adapt. So what you do is the fact that you start with one day every week, the first month, your total calorie intake is 1,000. Let me give you an idea what 1,000 is, right? I went to a restaurant recently and they were selling a small box of... Um, fried um chips and 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 chicken when i put them together the calorie intake was about 960. i ordered i went to a place i told you last week i had a bowl of um a bowl of of spaghetti but the calorie intake for that one is what for that one was 1300. so you can start the first month where you have what a 10 hour feeding period five days a week so we're going to do these two so look at it carefully so you eat only within an interval of 10 hour five days a week that's it then you move to the next month where you only eat for eight hour period five days a week let me explain the principle of why these things work. It means that if you have if you have a 24 hours of in a day and you only feed yourself within 10 hours, that means that 14 hours of the day you should have no food. 5 days a week. That is the principle. When you come to the so you do that for one month. Then you come to the second month. In the second month, you do 8 hour feeding period which is five what that means that 16 hours of the day so if you sleep for if you sleep for uh, uh, eight hours in a day then during the day you have only an eight hour period where you should eat and generally that will mean that you are going to end up eating one meal plus something that is what you want to do so i'm dealing with the time restricted feeding then we have the six hours six hours feeding period five times a day this is what it translates into. So if you sleep for eight hours, you are left with what, 16 hours. And if you get up in the morning and you end up eating your breakfast, then even you eat your breakfast at eight o'clock or seven o'clock, you have the opportunity to only eat again up to from seven all the way to 12 is five hours, up to three o'clock. Beyond that, you should not eat. That is your feeding period. 
If you have the six hour one, if you eat at seven o'clock, up to one o'clock, that is when you can take any meal. Beyond that, you don't. Then finally, your goal is to end up that every day you end up eating during a six hour period of the day. And that is what you take. Okay, so you can decide that okay, I'm going to eat from seven o'clock, or you can I'm going to eat from seven o'clock or eight o'clock up to two o'clock. Beyond that, I don't eat. You will be surprised that people practice this and it's been very effective. I heard a story of a guy who was a cook. He had three heart attacks whilst he was a cook. And uh, he heard somebody talk about intermittent fasting. He stopped being a cook and he decided that he's going to be a tourist, mountain climbing uh, 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 guide. And he started the principle of intermittent fasting and he ended up eating one day. And I'm sure he has the time-restricted approach. That is what he's using. Time-restricted feeding. That if I eat within the days, I'm going to eat within this certain period. Once I eat within that period, I'm not going to eat for the rest of the day. Um, and uh, since he started doing that, he's not had a heart attack. I heard this story, and it really, 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 really reinforced the idea of intermittent fasting. Now, let us do the 5 to 2. The 5 to 2, I said, is probably the easiest to do. So the 5 to 2 intermittent fasting, what you do is that one day in a week, you restrict your calorie to 1,000. This is something that you do. One day. If it's on Thursdays, you do that for, for one week. You do that every week you do that. And then the second month, you pick two days that you do calorie restriction of 1,000. That may transform to probably one or two meals, but that is where you're going to be. And then... During the third month, two days in a week, you restrict your calorie intake to, to what, 750. That may generally, I mean, that in practical terms, looking at the general American diet that we have in this country, that may be generally around one meal plus a small snack uh, two times in a week. That's what you do two times in a week. So you pick Tuesday or Thursday or uh, uh, Wednesday or Friday, any day that you want. That is the days that you practice that. The other days you do. That is what you do in your third month. And then finally, this is what you do. Very easy. Very, very easy. You restrict yourself to only 500, what? 500 calorie. That means one meal every two days, uh, one meal in two days every week. So if you are here with me, you realize that looking at these principles, if you are healthy enough and after having a discussion with your doctor, all of us, most of us, I wouldn't say all of us, because of some health-related issues, not everybody can probably do intermittent fasting. But having seen the benefits even in cancer patients and other people, I believe that after talking to your doctor, primary doctors and your specialists, virtually everybody can practice the principle of five to two intermittent fasting, uh, uh, um, that will help you. Uh, I, I practice, I'm generally, I'm currently around level four of the five. I don't do the five, uh, I do the five to two uh, on, my, on my normal days. And generally once or, twi once or twice in a, in a month, we also do uh, three, or three to five days of fasting every month, further improving my, uh, 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 my metabolic switch. There is one part of the world, there is an island in Japan called Okinawa. It is believed that the people in Okinawa, O-K-I-N-A-W-A, the people in Okinawa have probably the greatest longevity in the world. Very important. And it is known that the people in Okinawa it is, it is believed that probably Japan is known to have more people that are more than people that are more than 100 years old though, than any other part, any other country in the world. And it is known that the people of Oki, Okinawa probably are the people that live long than uh, probably the rest of the world. And the people in Okinawa, it is known that their lifestyle is based on intermittent fasting 
and with their food that is low in calorie based on legumes what did i say about legumes legumes have what excellent glycemic index you see the principles we're talking about so we have epidemiologic evidence that if you do the right things you can live long as long as god gives to you so we know that in people would in okinawa they practice intermittent fasting and they also what their diet is also based on low glycemic index food which is vegetables and what and legumes right and in addition to that one thing that i found out today is that they also eat sweet potatoes which seem to have some good so probably you can also switch you can also add that i'm going to look into i've not i've not looked at sweet but the benefits of sweet potatoes but i'm going to look at it i mean i like good things so if something is good i want to look at it so i believe that if nothing will convince you what is happening in okinawa and what has been what we've known about them should be enough evidence to you that a lifestyle of intermittent fasting and i've shown you these things that is there and you can also go and read the new england journal article yourself a lifestyle of intermittent fasting combined with appropriate dietary patterns in which your food is based on low glycemic index food has been shown without a shadow of doubt in at least people in Okinawa to produce longevity. So that epidemiological evidence should hopefully help convince you and me to make the appropriate changes in our lifestyle. Every day of intermittent fasting is producing benefits for weeks ahead of you. I hope we've been helpful. This is Dr. Isaac Upokwasare. I want to thank my production team that has been doing an excellent job. God bless you. God bless this country, America. Thank you.